Uh, everybody in the back, please move to the front. I'm only kidding. Somebody did that to me uh, at a presentation. I always sit in the back. It makes me uncomfortable. So uh, I'll give you a little bit about my background. Um, I've, always, I've only been in the marketing research business for seven years since I joined Afanova. I, uh, my background is mathematics and psychology. I owned a bagel shop in New York City, so I didn't, I did my qualitative research right there in front of, in my storefront. Uh, I moved into brand management and mostly in product development at Smith Klein Beecham on the uh, consumer side. And then I started moving into uh, targeted marketing where there was the intersection of technology. And then I joined Afanova because I thought this was a new way of thinking about uh, innovation. So uh, I have a, a certain kind of orientation about the industry and where it's headed. And it is a tremendous change. So there's four trends transforming everything that we're talking about here. One is the marketplace, connectivity, technology, and I would add creativity. So in the marketplace, this is probably not new news. Most things that we're talking about are not entirely new news. but for the last five years, 10 years, everybody's been talking about innovation. And when I think about innovation, I think of lots of things innovation, whether it is product development, whether it's advertising, it's all kinds of things that create a sale or a relationship with a customer that drives your business. It's been talked about for years. Um, uh, things like mobile have been talked about for years. They usually get hyped in the beginning or feel like they hype, and then when they come, they come hard. And if you're old, if you, as you get older, which I am actually getting older, um, you know, I saw the PC revolution, and I saw the internet revolution, where it looked incredibly hyped when they were selling dog food, you know, cheaply uh, online, and they were building supermarkets that, you know, turned out a billion dollars worth of investment to create a uh, uh, internet-based uh, supermarkets bombed. But 10 years later, the world has completely changed, and that's what's happening today. And I think innovation is going to change dramatically as well over the next 10 years. Um, it really is a structural change. So when you, when you read about what your CEOs are talking about and what the analysts are talking about, et cetera, it's here and it's, I think it's coming on even stronger. And you're seeing the restructuring of companies um, in terms of how they do business. Uh, it's pretty ubiquitous today. So one is just the increasing globalization competition. So you have just more companies competing uh, for the consumer. But now, now you have the you, now you have the companies in those markets competing with the global companies. If you look at India and look at China, and that's getting that's not that's not going to decelerate. That's going to accelerate. You've got new consumers, you've got rising expectations, and then you've got the ability to you know really deliver to niche markets. And if you don't have the ability to deliver to niche markets, you actually not may not have a market. So those are real fundamental changes. Can I, from from my vantage point and from what I can see from our uh, from our customers. Um, Companies are, are wanting to make a change and are willing to make a change, and they're saying they're not good at innovation, I think very, very overtly. Um, a lot of it has to do with generating ideas, which is a lot about what this conference is about. But another part of it is they don't believe that they have the cultures or the people who are really supportive of innovation. They're actually down on some of their organizations and how they behave. And I think that's important to, to know and to think about how uh, we behave uh, when we work. I'll talk a little bit about that. Connectivity, that's been the, the really at some of the entire conference. And mobile is going to change the world. You saw, you saw those charts. You see many, many charts. The PC kind of changed our world. And I think of our world as the Western world. Um, I think smartphones just changed the entire planet. A simple way of thinking about it. The, the, uh, the thing about the, all this connectivity is what strikes me is, and especially in the consumer products area, um, is that all this connectivity and arguably speed with which you can understand people um, does not match the, 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 the timelines that we, we use today and the, the ability we have today are completely mismatched. So if you look at uh, consumer packaged goods companies, they're launching products a year, two years, three years, God help us sometimes four years. I've seen them in five years. Yet, if you, look at, if you look at how quickly we can interact with a consumer, to understand a consumer, why is that? Like that's some, something's wrong there. I think it's going to change uh, uh, sooner rather than later. But if you're, if you're functioning as a firm like this, um, you will not be functioning for very long and competitive for very long. 
Um, I think that when you think about it beyond, again, product development, et cetera, and you think about all the things that you connect to, uh, with a consumer on to drive your business, um, I think with, the, with speed, I think with cost decreasing, I think you're going to create, be able to create exchanges with consumers where you can innovate on, on just about anything that you want to innovate, any exchange you want with, with a consumer, whether it's advertising, promotion, whether it's a tactical approach or it's a strategic approach. Um, and I think, the, I think in, in this instance, uh, I'm thinking not about understanding or asking. I'm not thinking about observing. I'm thinking about what is it that they want and how can I take an action on it. And if you use, I think, e-commerce as your paradigm, you think very differently about uh, how you think about the world. When you run an e-commerce company, the things that you can learn from a consumer, and what I mean learn is in real time learn that if I offer them this, they behave like this. If I offer them that, they behave like that. That model in innovation in general, I think is a model that, that, uh, um, that can be replicated uh, in, in our business. Next, I think I, m I moved ahead of myself. Sorry. Then technology. Uh, the old view of technology, and I think this is, I, I think this is, uh, I think the next two slides are, in my opinion, uh, pretty important. Um, I think the other ones are reasonably obvious. The old technology uh, view has been about really control, right, and automation of repetitive tasks. When you look at the new technology view, um, and some people use the, the word DIY, I think it's a completely kind of micro way of thinking about technology. I mean, if you think about spreadsheets and you think about things you do every day, you know, you used to do, you know, this to, to communicate with people, I think, you know, fire and this, and then all of a sudden you have this, and, you know, is this DIY or, and was this the better way? You know, it's kind of weird. So, but the, uh, the new view, and when you think about what technology can do for you, and I, think, and I think people have to look at ones that are good and ones that are bad. But ultimately, way, the way I think CEOs are thinking about the business is it's freeing human beings to be creative and empower them. All right? That's what it's all about. That's what the technology... And if, by the way, if the technology is not doing that for you, then you probably have the wrong technology. Right? I think that is the, the, that is the prism within which most people are thinking about it at the high level. And that's the prism that you should think about it when you do your job every day. There's two technologies that we think are pretty interesting, you can name a lot. But these two, I think, are, are pretty interesting, and obviously they relate to our business as well. One is distributing technologies, which is enabling lots of people to be part of the innovation chain, right? And, uh, and in my opinion, there's obvious reasons for that. That, is all, that can shake people up, right? Because that was my job, right? And by the way, that was my job back in 1991. I made sure nobody else had the job because I was, you know, I, I behaved in an old school manner at the time. Um, it isn't your single job. It's actually, it's actually lots of people's jobs, okay? And that, and, and the, and the, on the idea that uh, innovation is about, well, is innovation better when it's one person or a group of people? That's a, you know, a, a kind of uh, uh, stupid argument to make. The, uh, the distributing technologies allow for all of that. And if you're not using them as firms, you should be using them as a firms. And that goes within, that goes within uh, crossing the boundaries with, within your firms, across divisions, or it goes across into your agencies and your partners. Right? What, is it that, what is it that somebody knows in Germany in the R&D area that you don't know that could be helpful to you? The other one is algorithmic technologies. And that means, uh, as we were talking about, lots and lots of data. Are there technologies that they can take that data and synthesize it in a way that tells you what to do? And it's coming. And I think mo a lot of these things are coming not just from the MR world. I would argue they're coming from IBM, Adobe, Omniture. Okay, that side of the world. They're coming this way. And I think they may be leading the charge in the next 10 years. Uh, the other one is marketing automation, which in a sense is in this, in this, in this uh, general field as well. Embrace it. Okay, that's in, in, in areas of marketing beyond kind of CRM. And uh, certainly, not so much in kind of the CPG world, but in the e-commerce world, you see a lot. Marketing automation has transformed these industries, and it created incredibly huge disciplines. Okay, so when you look at web analytics, 
Um, it's a gigantic industry. I mean, if you go to Silicon Valley and look at all those companies, think how many people are working on the web and understanding what's going on there. Business intelligence, predictive analytics, which a lot of IBM, et cetera, is doing. So that world is coming into our world, and uh, I, I, think, I think it's incredibly exciting. I think it's, it, it is a, it's a rebirth of an industry that has been, it's been a tough industry for a while. It will be a rebirth of this industry. These are trends I see, at least. Then creativity. So we're kind of talking about connectivity. We're talking about you know the business world as it as it stands, the marketplace. Uh, we're talking about empowerment. What is, what does that mean? What does that what, to me? What it means is it's still all about the human being at the end of the day, right? Uh, we've gone through how many uh, cycles of agriculture, indu industrial industrial uh, economy, information economy. We're still all here. Most of us are employed. We like to get the employment rate up. Um, but we've gone through all that change. A lot of people talk about the economy today as the creative economy. And, one of the, and some of the definitions of the creativity, creative economy that I like is the economy is about building on ideas. And again, when you think about what, your, what our jobs are in terms of, of innovation, I think that's, that should be your central focus. Am I really building on ideas that matter in the marketplace? Um, and then the idea that uh, the developing world will, that we can, we can capture that and hold on to that without working hard is, is, uh, is honest, uh, obviously probably not true. We're going to we're gonna have to be really good at it because other people are falling right behind us from, a, from, an, uh, from a, a global world, although you could argue what are boundaries today anyway. Um, the other thing that, about creativity in a sense I think scares people is that you, you have to be a creative person. You're some, somewhat of an unusual person. Uh, but studies show, in my mind, and I work I think we're a pretty creative company, and we work very hard on innovation. What I, what, what I think you learn when you read it, it's about habits. It's about how you behave. It's about how you think. And there's two things. I, I can't do it in this, uh, in this, uh, in this particular setting, but uh, two things that, that I see, and that if you read uh, pretty exhaustively on creativity, you'll see a common uh, uh, view on creativity. And that is, creativity is really about combining convergent and divergent thinking. So I think when we have all this technology, all this information, trying to move faster, et cetera, what, what human beings are going to do across all these different disciplines is try to be as creative they, as they can be. And I think companies and people themselves should learn how to handle this divergent, convergent thinking. Divergent thinking means I've got data now, and I understand the world as it is today, right? Which is good when you're a pretty successful company and you've got something, you've got a bull by the horns. When you're doing new things and when you're not such a successful company, you need divergent thinking. And divergent thinking is actually opposite of that. Opposite, it means that I, don't, I, I hold analysis to the side and I think what's possible and I think what's almost, almost unreasonable. Most people cannot do these two things. And most committees and groups can't do these things. If, if it, this is where you get the greatest, cre uh, credit, uh, the greatest output and you get the greatest leverage from people on what you know. So I think creativity is going to be a big part of how people work, and I think that's where, where you're going to see a change in how people, how organizations think about developing people. Those are trends that I see. Now, on the optimization front, we kind of sit in the middle of it, and I'll do this incredibly quickly. Um, so we have software that allows people to collaborate. It's called divergent collaboration, which means all the ideas can be shared, and they can be, and, they, and you create an innovation space of thousands and millions of ideas. That's what we enable our clients to create. Uh, it is a collaborative platform. It can go globally. Um, you can create an innovation space. So instead of testing one thing, two things, three things, you can test thousands of things and millions of things. What is it that you want? So you've gotten tea leaves. You've got ideas. You've got things you think are true. You th you, you've got ideas that you think are, not, are, not, are, are, are possible, but you don't know. These can be rendered to consumers. Uh, that's kind of collaboration part. There is actually a collaboration online when people come online to go through these choices of, of concepts to, to understand what they want, again, whether it's product, whether it's advertising, et cetera. There's actually a collaboration going on this, uh, behind the scenes uh, through these algorithms that try to figure out what it is that people want based on what they're selecting, come up with top concepts. Now, this, in my opinion, is changing a very old world, which is, you know, which is concept testing and new product development in a lot of other areas. You're talking about things that are tested six weeks, eight weeks, 
cost ten ten thousand seven thousand fifteen thousand uh, dollars what we can do uh, we can do millions uh, and we're doing it for not much more than that and we're doing it in days not months an example here uh, locally at uh, in Cincinnati with, with Procter and Gamble is uh, we worked on the Oral-B uh, brush that they're launching now and uh, they worked on it for five years, which is not atypical of what firms do. And I did it because I was a smoke client vision. We worked on one thing for three and a half years, God help us. Um, and with the optimization, we were able to uh, two to one increase preference and do this within days, not not years. Um, and that's it really for me. Any questions? Hello. So my question is, you're, I was intrigued by your comment about how CPG companies probably need to be launching in six months' timing, not two, three, five years, which I'm sure every company would love to do that. But what is your thoughts then on how that physically happens? Because by the time you cut steel, qualify a manufacturing site, produce, six months really isn't viable, or it's on the very edge of yeah. a new product. Yeah, so I, should the, I, I so might my, be, go ahead, sorry. Okay, so as a second follow-up then would be, so when we're looking at this data that's coming in, should we, so should they be thinking about leapfrogging even? So we can't make this wave, but what do you think is the wave behind that one? Correct. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can't change your supply chain, you've got to deal with your supply chain. But your, your supply chain, by and large, is not the... I, in my opinion, is not, has not been the forcing function on, on product development, right? Uh, the launches I've, that I've been involved in uh, on the brand side were always much longer than, you know, everything that we had to do on a logis 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 logistical basis. A hard word for me to say, apparently. Um, so uh, so I think, I think if, if you can't do it that way, you can't do it that way. Maybe it's nine months a year, depending on what you're doing. But I think what, 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 what can happen is if you can understand what people want and get those things to market faster, you can spend a lot more time on developing your pipeline should increase in terms of its size, but more importantly, its quality. Right? That, what I'm saying is that, we, we, that with all these tools and technology, crunching data and all this other stuff is going to get really easy. It is. It's going to get easier and easier and easier and easier. What people should be doing is spending a lot of time on the creative side. I don't mean, and that's, I'm giving you a view on creativity. You can take creativity in a lot of different ways, but we should be spending a lot of time on R&D, and I mean R&D from a science perspective, I mean R&D from an understanding consumer perspective, and we should be doing a lot more work there than all the kind of tactical execution that occurs here that doesn't create original products and doesn't actually create successful products. So technology is going to allow us to get rid of all that as it always has, but it's going to focus our minds on real value. And I think it's going to come, and I use the word creativity as a general word for, for new things. And creativity is, is coming from the human being on these two levels. So that's, that's, I don't know if that's a circular way of answering your question, but uh, uh, if I could, if, uh, when I look at what we do, I can, launch a pro I can understand what product to launch in basically two and a half weeks. You know, when I was at Smith Klein Beecham, I was still working on our product for three years. That three-year period, I could have killed that damn thing, because we eventually killed it after three years, and we could have been working on how many other product ideas that were really meaningful than what we did before. So you can, I think you will tilt the equation, and then, and then who does that? Well, that's human beings. That's who does that. Data doesn't do that, right? Human beings do that. So I think that's the way the world is headed. I think the world is going to ask a lot more of us in that way, and if you like that kind of stuff, it's really cool. Um, but I don't think you have to be afraid of it because most human, most intelligent people uh, are, are honestly pretty creative. It's their habits that get in their way, right? It's like, we did that, we tried that before. It'll never work. That's a horrible habit, right? You know, we can't prove this is true. That's a horrible habit, right? There's import, there's sometimes, that, some that, sometimes that stuff is important, but sometimes it is really preventing us from working. And that's why I'm saying that the idea of creativity, I think, is going to really permeate organizations uh, and change the way we think and the way we work. 